We're going to get this field disked up and get it prepped for beans. Yeah, this corn's looking better now after I had some sunshine on it for a week. Uh, it still has issues up there in the middle, but that's all right because my plan is I'll just tear that out and uh, go with a fall annual in there. So let's get the discing while it's still cool. We got a lot, a lot of work to do. And uh, I tell you, there's a lot of stuff on the YouTube channel about dragging dirt around and shifting it around and doing all that and with four wheelers and whatever. And it can be done. I'm going to tell you right now, when you take this on, number one, you're not getting paid for it. Number two, you better have a passion because your patience will run out. Because your reward is that new fawn that you're seeing there in the perennial field. And a lot of people get real enthused on the first year or two of food plotting and then they burn out real quick. Well. Um, I don't know what to tell you about that because it's an, it's an annual happening. And that's a nice thing about perennials. If you go with a perennial, the maintenance is a little there, but you don't have to worry about the planting every year. So let's get to discing. Turning up that corn residue pretty good. I think it'll all show you. It dried out in the last two days, so we lucked out. We got the field dished up, chopped up that corn residue. It turned up pretty good. Uh, as you can tell, it's loose now. You can kick it with your foot. But, and we worked at corn stock in, which is gonna help raise the organic matter and make your soil that much richer. You could leave it on top, but with that crust that was on there, it's really going to be hard for my planter to get down through there. And uh, like I said, I don't know what happened to that corn right there in that area. Other than it just, just got beat to death. But you know, now you can see the sun's coming up and out there. Now you can roll some of that corn. Now I got to get in there and get that sprayed ASAP. Because uh, those weeds are growing pretty good. Well now that we got that field uh, somewhat loosened up, here comes the expensive part. And this is something why you may want to go with perennials. Perennials, they take some maintenance, but the cost is not near as expensive as uh, planting bean and corn for food plotters in the sense that First of all, you got to have the equipment. Second of all, you're going to have to buy the, the corn, the beans, and the um, fertilizer. Now, let me step out of the way. Now, there's the cost right there. Now, keep in mind, you buy a can of beer, the results, 
I see that the Deer Classic beer was selling for like $8 for a cup. And all you do is piss that money away. There ain't a whole lot of difference in that van. Just a different form of pissing it away. But it's all being pissed away. So you have to set your priorities on what you're going to spend your money on. Whiskey, wine, women, big wheels on small trucks. Uh, some people are spending $2,100 a wheel on tire to set their truck up higher than you can get it in a stepladder. But that's their, you know, idea of a truck. But in the long run, it's just money, and just you have to be willing to spend that kind of money. Uh, but like I said, we all are guilty of pissing money away in one form or the other. So that's my way of pissing money away. Yeah, we're going to dump this fertilizer into the spreader. And, uh, oh, by the way, my love affair for that Cosmo spreader still continues. Uh, when I tried to put it on, the fertilizer on the corn, that shear pin broke in it. So I'm going to light it, load it real light. But in doing that, you want to make sure, even though you're in a hurry, to do some preventative maintenance. You don't want to be breathing that fertilizer dust any more than you have to. Keep it off your skin and out of your eyes because it burn like hell. So we're going to get to dumping it on here. I want to make a screen. Here and, uh, I'm going to use this concealed product by Whitetail Institute see how it plays out. That uh, the area I want to put it, I want to put a little more nitrogen than the rest of the field. So uh, that's the reason I put that added nitrogen in there. This is the triple 13. And what you're going to see now, I'm adding a little more nitrogen to up that because I'm going to plant, like I said, I'm going to plant that conceal and Oh, my old friend power plant in a couple of spots. So it needs more nitrogen. So in a certain areas, I want to make sure I got the nitrogen up a little higher in those areas. That's the nitrogen right there. Two white. Two white right there. It's called a rhea. Now what we'll do is I'll get my spade and we'll make mix that up in there. This is where goggles and stuff come in handy. Put a little more. Put the 13 in there. Oh, mix it up again. Yeah, I may go back this year and broadcast the soybeans on. I want a higher population for the weed growth. It'll, it'll canopy out faster and suppress those weeds. And I won't have that bare dirt in the 38 inch row. Or I've got several options I want to try, but I'm going to seed it tomorrow, get the fertilizer on it, get it incorporated today. And then tomorrow I'll make up my mind whether it's broadcasting or planting them uh, but when I plant them I'm going to plant the rows real tight because I want the canopy of those beans to get that bare dirt covered up as fast as they can to suppress the weed growth. Another nice advantage about a van it becomes your Morton portable Morton building. Uh, you had played hell having all that stuff in the back of a pickup truck with all the rain that we had.
Another nice thing about putting that area in there, you can see the contrast. The white. Now if you were just putting your triple 13 in there, you wouldn't see that because that was pure brown, same color as the dirt. But at least you can see the dist distribution of the nitrogen in your fertilizer so you know the triple 13's right in there with it. But like I said, when you look down there you can see the white fertilizer on the ground and that lets you know you got it covered. But, uh, because you wouldn't see the triple 13 on there. Matter of fact, you know, you, we see, you've seen us mix it in there, but you can't see. Oh, there's one right there. But really hard to see. But at least you know you got it fertilized with the urea mixed in there with it. Okay, now that we got the fertilizer on, we got to incorporate it into the dirt. And what we're going to have to do, we're going to change the pitch on the disc. I don't need it as aggressive. I just need it to level. And that's the nice thing about this wood disc is you can change the pitch in and out on it. Now, uh, I'll show you here. Uh, I'm not going to get around the tractor because I don't want the, the disc to drop. Now, what I'm going to do is pull that pin out right there and pull that pin out. And that will let me set the pitch different. Now, I'm going to start the tractor and... Uh, the way those pins are, you can stay out. You don't want to be underneath there. So, uh, but I can pull that pin out and get that adjusted so I can bury the fertilizer and not be too aggressive. And I'm going to start the tractor up so it's going to be a little noisy, but you'll see what I do. I'm going to change the pitch on that front blade. You want to make sure you don't get your feet under the disc. Space here. Okay, if it, if it just happens to drop, you're not under it. There. Now see the pitch. I'll do more leveling. I don't want those. I don't want those tire ruts where I fertilize to dry up and be hard pan, so I gotta get to going. And I'll tell you what, filming and, and, and doing this takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. There you go, that's throwing that, that dirt over that fertilizer and incorporating it in. Well, tomorrow we'll do the plant. Well, here it is. Almost 6 o'clock Sunday morning on the 9th. What we're going to do is broadcast these beans on. I've had pretty good luck in, in the past doing that. And uh, we can get them broadcast on and uh, worked into the ground. but. I just want to show you that ground was so hard panned from all that rain. Let's say we got dust in it now and we'll walk over here where the corn was planted and well, I'm going to come in here and the corn is coming up through there but that ground is hard as concrete and so uh, but I can roll that down there but anyhow. We'll address that with an annual. Yeah, we we'll got these beans in here. I elected to broadcast them on this year. 
going to disc them in. I've had good luck with that. And that's for people that don't have planters that you can broadcast your soybeans on, egg beans on, and you, it, it does come out all right. Uh, I'll go back and run the disc over to incorporate them into the soil, which goes pretty fast. Now, like I say, I'm doing this for two reasons. It's a little faster, plus it'll show that you guys without a planter can go. Now, if I had the time and good dirt conditions, I would go ahead and put them in rows. But broadcasting them on works just as well. I've had excellent luck in the past with them. And so for you guys that don't have, like I say, access to a planter or a drill, you can broadcast your beans on and then drag them in. Because uh, they'll, they'll grow pretty good that way. Here we go, we'll get the broadcast and the beans on. When you're broadcasting them on, you can see them. You gotta go pretty fast, or could, especially on that big spreader, because it'll really throw them out. Now, see, there's the moisture. We'll, when we get down, we'll have that down in there. But uh, you, you want to put about at least a third more beans on than what you would normally put on. Uh, because some are going to germinate, some aren't. I got the beans on here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a buffer area with this power plant. And I had some bad luck with that in the past, but I've had some good luck with it too. So I'm just going to make narrow bands with it uh, between the corn and the soybeans. It'll act as two things. It'll act as a forage bean, uh, keeps the pressure off the beans, plus it'll give a screening effect later on in the year. So I'll get it laid out here. Now I laid those flags out. That's about, oh, not much more than 10 yards strip down around there. So uh, let's get to putting the power plant on. The reason I put these on with the little spreaders, I can control it better. And like I say, I'm just trying to make a buffer zone. And a summertime forage with the forage soybean in it. And hopefully, they'll gravitate to that, which they have in the past, uh, over the egg beans and leave them alone. We'll take off cranking this power plant on. Okay, this area in here. Uh, I'm gonna try power plant in here again. Last time I did it really got taken over, but I will give it another try. I'll get it staked out here. Get the seed cranked on. It's supposed to rain this afternoon. Couldn't be any better.
hay. You can see the beans in there. Now those have got to be covered. You could leave, leave them on top of the ground, but you need to cover them at least an inch of dirt. So what we're going to do, we got the disc set up straight, and we're going to run over that field and cover those beans up. They're calling for 50% chance to rain from noon uh, for a couple hours, and we really need that, of all things. You know, timely rains are priceless. And, um, but that's what you have to deal with. So let's get the tractor started up and get the disc going. I set that pitch deeper on the front because I didn't like the, the coverage, I, you know, of what, it wasn't throwing enough dirt on the beans. So, this way it'll cover more. I want them down in the dirt, I don't want them laying on top. Okay, here we go again. Now you can see we've got the dirt over the beans by that second disking. And what I think, I got a new chain harrow. I'm gonna drag it over the top. Cause like I say, right here you can see the beans. And over here, we've got them covered pretty much. There's one, but they've got dirt thrown over them for the most part. And that's what you wanna do if you're gonna broadcast them. That'll get them covered up because you just don't want to leave them lay you could leave them lay on the ground like that I've seen them grow but if you got that time better off to get them incorporated and I like to ran the pulverizer on here but with that corn stock residue in there it would just plug it up okay here's a new product we're going to try we need a little without the corn we need a little you know, seclusion uh, or concealment and that's what this new product from Whitetail Institute is supposed to be called Conceal. It's uh, not a really a food plot uh, item, but we're going to crank it on right now. Okay, we've got a new apparatus here. It's a chain drag, and I'm going to run it over the top of that field where I planted that Conceal, cover it up, and run it back over the beans so it'll get good coverage. Uh, these are two-sided. This is the aggressive side. Uh, and you flip it over. I got it on the shallow side because I've already disted it. But if you flip that over, these would be what would be sticking in the ground. So that would get pretty aggressive. That's eight foot wide. Uh, nice little attachment. You can pull it behind a four-wheeler if you had to. You know, they make them smaller, but that's eight foot because there ain't no use of having four, something four foot in a field this big. This horro, horro one. I take you along and you can actually see this apparatus working and you can see why I couldn't run the pulverizer over here because of the corn residue it would be picking it up this way that just drags right over it so let's get on the tractor and I'll show you
Well, there you have it. We got the beans in, we got the power plant in, and uh, got them covered up. Now all we can do is wait on the rain. It's supposed to be here this afternoon. Field of dreams. We'll just have to see what it turns into, either a nightmare or something robust. Who knows? We're sitting on the porch right at 10 o'clock. We got what we got done. When I left home, it had 50% chance of rain between basically 1 to 3 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, so, and then you heard it, it's going to rain Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, so, I got a lot of work to do. I got to get out of here. And uh, so, that's it. Food plot done. You got to rock, you got to roll. You might piss some people off along the way, but you only got teeny windows on a year like this. But it'll become more pre prevalent. What'll make the window wider for you is if you get into that pinch, just go to a fall annual, and that'll give you, you got August, you, you can get the whole month of August or there, it should be dry. And with that said, that's just me saying it, not Mother Nature. But anyhow, it's not over with if you don't get corn or bean crop in for a food plot in the spring, because you can always go with a barasca. So that's it from the non-typical from the front porch. Sometimes I make mistakes. June 19th, I try to document. Yesterday was the 8th. I come over here, it's supposed to be the 9th. I, I lost two days. It's the 11th. Then I gain it back. Then there's the 11th on the Tuesday. So, even in every industry, there's mistakes, even in making the calendar. <laughs> I just, what's the odds of that? Coming up to write something on a calendar for the 9th and finding out that it's the 11th. Oh well, that's life in America today.